Well, how many jet streams are there? This is a picture from today, uh, the Pacific Ocean. What do you think? How many jet streams do you see in that picture? You don't think climate chaos is happening? It surely is. And it can't be all attributed to just hotter weather. In the southeast Pacific, you see that patch of water directly in front of you. That's the remnants of Hurricane Iota. It's going to drift over there and catch that bottom jet stream. Off to the right, you see Central America still raining in Central America. Death toll climbs by the day. Hundreds are missing. And then to quantify the death toll, you're going to have to get the death toll in Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua and figure out how many people this hurricane finally kills. Remember, after the hurricane, there's usually extreme heat, there's contaminated water, so the death toll will be climbing for weeks to come. We're glad that it wasn't the thousands that we were afraid of. For once, we were wrong on something. This is Southwest United States. Uh, lo looks like we're completely covered in clouds, but we're not. This is all particulate. This is all man-made. There's no smoke left in California. And when you go down to cloud level and you go to lower IR, you can see the crosses in the sky. You can see the lines being created right before your eyes. X's, triangles, lines. This is not clouds. When do clouds make X's in the sky? Uh, somebody had sent me... Uh, some pictures today of the Southwest saying, man, they're just laying it down. Couldn't understand. Uh, we're going to get hit by cosmic rays. Uh, did, was there a CME? Anybody know? Please chime in. But I, I went in on the weather map just to see if I could see these trails on the weather map. And you see all kinds of X's and crosses and triangles. Uh, that is not. Those are not. And if you think these are normal clouds something is wrong with your brain um, go back to school and learn about clouds we even see these lines going down into mexico but there's a bottom jet stream traveling through they're chemtrailing in it and on either side of it and usually when there's a little moisture in the air and you spray particulates sometimes you can get rain but it amplifies your cloud layer and the sun was intense today that's all i got to say the sun was intense not bad for a november huh they said it was 85 degrees but one of the thermometers was registering 95 to 100 degrees in direct su sunlight in november so put that in the chemtrail pipe and smoke it um, I know people that are getting out of the southwest because of it's so hazy they don't want to breathe it but those lines appear all along and all around the world now we showed you a, a, an explosion of like moisture in this this jet stream you know they're all jet streams but we thought it was dissipating the water a day later we see the explosion being amplified and it's not dissipating the water it's creating a water cloud so we're going to keep an eye on this see if it uh, develops a rotation this is called a synoptic map uh, i use it a lot to validate the magnetic field diagrams we're looking at to help understand what's going on with the sun um, if you know where i could find it please send me the link because they've taken it down just every time we feature stuff it gets taken offline now remember who started the earth wobble creates earthquakes. Remember who broke that story of polar opposite quakes. Well, now you see the story showing up in mainstream. Here you see it goes x-ray flux. You see it's above 10 to the minus 8, normally hanging down 10 to the minus 9. That's a tenfold increase in x-rays. So we showed you uh, these x-rays. We look at the solar wind. And we see the yellow line and the gold line are mirroring each other. And they're not supposed to. They're supposed to be opposite of one another. When density goes up, speed goes down. Not anymore. Part of the reason is that we have rays coming in opposite those arrows. Imagine those arrows just flip around coming into the sun. And then you could see there'll be times where there's gaps in between the spiral arms. 
and we'll get pulses of outside cosmic rays coming in that that spins and flips your your magnetosphere stream your tail stream it creates vortexes in the tail stream another thing is you know people don't realize how, that iron at one point cosmic rays were outpacing protons that were being measured but we know why the protons were just taking a dive because they were being absorbed by helium-3 and alpha particles and the, the iron it's kind of hard to absorb uh, iron is travels on its own uh, when it collides it, sometimes it maintains its structure but at in 2003 you can see that we were leaving solar maximum we saw the baseline really high on the x-rays now when at times we see the, the x-rays down to 10 to the minus 9 now we showed you when those x-ray images were dark that these were still measuring 10 to the minus 8 10 to the minus 7 10 fold increase in just the background x-rays had nothing to do with what was going on the sun because the sun was blank it was dark the SXI goes x-ray imaging showed nothing on the sun in terms of x-rays but yet we see a tenfold increase some of the time when the picture looked like this how can you have a tenfold increase in the highest um, x-rays being measured the highest energy x-rays being measured now lately we have getting a little more x-rays on these images there's the sun is starting to pick up and deliver us more x-rays well if the sun is intense and in killing the earth now what is it going to do when solar maximum comes back into play and the sxi the x-ray from goes starts to look like this what is going to happen how they can't spray enough to block all this stuff out so what we're hoping is the corona holes cmes will push these cosmic rays out the expanding heliosphere of the sun will create a bubble of protection before the sun starts to put out these kind of x-rays then you won't have the double whammy of a tenfold increase in the background and a probably a 20-fold increase in what comes directly off the sun that would spell doom for earth and we're trying to run models or projections the math we can't get to come out yet but when we we see now decreasing spirals in our tail stream on the magnetos magnetosphere simulation and when the x when those cosmic rays come in you see sometimes they'll meet resistance depending on what direction they come in but as soon as those those spirals go past it creates little gaps and they come pulsing in and so that's why we get turbulence and pulses in the magnetic field that's why we get these really tight intense spirals it's because of a second source of solar wind that right now we're not seeing these tremendous tremendous vortexes in our tail stream mainly because those cosmic rays are running almost directly in opposition because we're passing in between the sun and a brown dwarf and if you don't think the sun is killing the earth you tell me this why do people have a blank stare when i tell them in 2004 they re they redid the uv index scale from 10 maximum to 11 and above this shows you 15 15 on a scale that went to 10 and that's extreme ultraviolet so if 10 and 11 goes to extreme what do you call 15 people i tell people this over and over and i show them the proof that the sun is cooking the earth and they just look at me like with a blank stare they don't get the implications of raising the uv index from 10 to 11 and above they don't even put a top limit on it now um you know covid in the news again we we're finding more and more studies being done on silver uh, you know healthcare institutions need to get over it they need to start putting this in their air filters they need to start spraying their masks they need to coat their contact surfaces spray spray everything down with a silver application these guys are in the business they they order silver nitrate for babies eyes so 
listen, you know, if you're in a hospital, you care about your employees, you care about your infection rate, you care about this pandemic, you need to start spraying your air filters with silver. And it doesn't matter. We've seen silver capped with glutathione. We've seen silver uh, mixed with silica. We've seen silver uh, on its own, ionized silver, nanoparticles. We've seen silver colloids, nanoparticles. We've seen all kinds of silver compounds. Didn't matter how they were formulated, silver inactivates viruses. You need to be on it. And since it kills bacteria and mold, why wouldn't you just put it on your air filter anyways? Well, I sprayed it on my air filters at the cancer retreat. We had the cleanest, nicest, most wonderful air in the world. It was the top rated air in the country. The, the water was pure. There was nothing in the water that was contaminated. We still sprayed our air filters with ozone and we sprayed our air filters with silver. Why? Because you just can't keep the air clean enough and we were more worried about mold than we were about viruses or bacteria because sometimes it rained you know and there was a lot of moisture so we were more worried about mold you know and it, it, when it snows there's a lot of cabins in the snow that smell like mold so spray your air filters with silver um, so anyways I hope you enjoyed this presentation where the other comp you know we had computers get attacked go down we've got we pulled off a ton of old videos that were up on the other channel we're going to be sifting through them putting some of the most spectacular most awe inspiring videos we're going to put those back up on the channel uh, we're not putting up any attack videos somebody told me the reason i was taken down is because i was attacking um the psyop channels and they didn't like me calling out the PSYOP channels and that's the reason they took me down um, the other thing was as they said the cancer thing is real real sensitive so you notice I'm not saying a whole lot about cancer anymore so until next time I'm sorry the world is doing what it's doing 